This is NBC 10 at issue. From what you'll pay at the grocery store to how your benefits could change, tax reform could make a big impact on your bottom line, and the president has promised a sweeping overhaul. I would say that we will probably start going very, very strongly for the big tax cuts and tax reform. That'll be next. With me now to help us understand what changes could mean for everyone's bottom line is Jamie Hopkins. Jamie is with the American College of Financial Services. He is the co-director of its retirement income program and an associate professor of taxation. Jamie, thanks for being with us. Yeah, thanks for having me, Aaron. All right, first of all, help us understand what changes Mr. Trump wants. He has promised that the rich will pay their fair share, but mm -hmm. what about the other income levels? Yeah, so we don't have a bill yet, so that's the big starting point. So we're still listening to what he said during the campaign trail and trying to match that up with what the House is kind of talking about, too. Now, he's talked about simplifying the tax code. That's the clear message, right. simplify. So you can fill out your taxes on a note card, right, and send it in. That'd be nice, right? Yeah, <laughs> I, I, and almost every American says, you know what, I'd like that. I would like a simpler tax code. Most people don't understand what's in there. Uh, so, but then it's the devil's in the details. Right, so we have to wait a little bit and see what happens. But Trump really proposed taking our seven tax rate brackets down to three, and so kind of lowering the the top tax bracket down and lowering the other ones down too. So at first glance, it would look like almost everyone's going to see a lower tax rate. Now your effective taxes, it's not as clear because we've got to wait and see what deductions are removed or added. So is his plan much different than what? most Republicans want? Uh, it's different in some key areas, but a lot of areas they agree on. Bringing the, the, the tax rates down across the board, they agree on. Corporate tax rates, bringing them down, mm -hmm. they agree on. Now, when we start talking about things like uh, exports, imports, the taxes on there, it, not as clear uh, that they're on the same page. And they talked about, you know, health care being, you know, a surprise on how challenging it is. Well, really, the Affordable Care Act maybe impacts about 100 million Americans directly because uh, a lot of people are on their employer plans. Now, uh, taxes basically impacts all of Americans. And so all of a sudden, it, that makes it more complicated in and of itself to get on the same page. So you, you talked about import fees. Mm -hmm. How could that change? What does that mean for the average American? We, we hear import fees. Yeah. We automatically <laughs> think, okay, our avocados are going to cost more. Mm -hmm. And actually what Trump has been, President Trump's been talking about is really a tariff on imports. And so if that's 20%, then the avocados in the store are going to go up by 20% or pretty close to it. Tariffs tend to get passed on directly to the consumer. So if that's part of tax reform, it's going to hit your you know, pocketbook. You are going to spend more money on goods that are being imported. Now, there's also a term that's out there a lot, the border adjustability tax. That's complicated, okay. to say the least. Uh, it's not exactly a tariff. The idea there is that you make imports a little bit more difficult to come in, and that helps support exports. The idea there is, you know, maybe some things being imported become more expensive, but the U.S. dollar is supposed to grow, our economy is supposed to grow, so that is hopefully offsets some of those costs. But it's not the same thing as a tariff. So who are the winners and the losers of this plan, as far as we know right now? Yeah. Well, the corporations are big winners. That one's clear. If we go from a 35% tax bracket to something around 15 to 20, that's a clear winner. And Morningstar, who does a lot of work on kind of corporate valuations, they said some corporate valuations might rise by 30 to 40% under mm -hmm. this. So. Wow. Uh, if you're invested in those stocks, also you're going to be a winner there. Now, for uh, one of the scary parts, we kind of say maybe the sacred cow is the home interest deduction for your mortgage and charitable deductions. Now, both of them are, you know, I think it's going to be hard to pass getting rid of those two, but they've been discussed. And then we'd see clear losers, right? Uh, schools, churches, hospitals. Uh, if we get rid of the charitable deduction, they would be major losers immediately, and we would know that right off the bat. It's tax season, so a lot of people are hanging on what you're saying. Our tax code, though, really hasn't changed much in about 30 years. Why is that? Because it's difficult, right? It, it, there's a reason we didn't change it for 30 years, and not, at least not a major overhaul, right? We've been patching holes for 30 years, and you, if last time we changed it 30 years ago, it was about 30 years before that that we did a major, major overhaul. It's because it impacts almost everyone in America. And some things, uh, we're not real clear what the impact will be when we we pass that if 
you know, kind of I said before, let's say we get rid of the charitable deduction. You don't get to deduct uh, major gifts to hospital schools. Well, a side effect of that might be the student let debt crisis gets worse because mm -hmm. schools might become more expensive so then people are borrowing more and, and that's a side effect of some of those things that we might not even see for eight years down the road and, and so that makes kind of tax reform very challenging. There's a ripple effect. Yeah. You do one thing and it affects so many others. So how long do you think it'll take to see a difference if this tax reform bill goes through? Is it immediate? Is it in a couple of years? Yeah, I think what they want right now is to have a bill out in the next two months and then hopefully be voting on it this summer and then having a lot of those tax laws come into place next year. So this year's taxes, they're not going to change. Next year's taxes might. And we're really talking about next year's taxes being, you know, 2018, so when you're paying them in 2019. Probably the taxes and the income you earn this year is not going to be tremendously impacted. All right. A lot to uh, look forward to and, and see what happens, how this all shakes out. Jamie Hopkins, thank you from the American College of Financial Services. We appreciate your time this morning. Thank you for having me. All right. Well, if